All right, so uh, in this video, I'll be showing you a uh, dissection of a crayfish. Um, so this is a representative of the class Malacostraca, uh, or what used to be called uh, the crustacea, um, or crustaceans. So uh, this organism is an arthropod. Uh, it has this uh, exoskeleton made of chitin, uh, and it has these jointed legs, uh, which you can see in this uh, walking leg here. So this makes it part of the arthropods. Um, and arthropod or arthropoda literally just means jointed foot. So here you can see uh, there's a joint here, 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 uh, and then you might not be able to see it on the camera, but there's one here as well. So uh, there's lots of segments in uh, legs, um, which gives it a lot of uh, 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 range of movement. Um, so. This is an extremely diverse group of organisms. Well, the arthropods are an extremely diverse group of organisms, uh, and then even uh, the crustaceans or the decapods, uh, like you see here um, in the class Malacostraca, are uh, hyper diverse themselves. So I'm going to go through external anatomy, uh, and then I'll walk you all through uh, dissecting this crayfish, and then I'll go through internal anatomy, um, and then that'll be. Uh, it for a crayfish dissection. So for external anatomy, uh, this crayfish has two general areas. So it has a cephalothorax, which ranges from the tip of its cranial, uh, or its head right here, all the way to uh, this joint right here. So from, um, from here to here, uh, we have the cephalothorax. Just behind the cephalothorax, uh, from here to roughly about here, we have the abdomen. So if you think about uh, the general body plan of an arthropod uh, or an insect, an insect has a distinct head, thorax, and abdomen uh, that are separate from each other. But in here, in our crayfish, we have a head and a thorax that are fused together along this line right here. So we consider this entire segment uh, a cephalothorax, uh, and then we have the abdomen just posterior to it. So while looking at the cephalothorax, we have this pyramid-like structure uh, that covers the top of the eyes right here. So from, uh, if you can imagine a line right here that extends to that point here, this is uh, what's called the rostrum. Um, so it's giving a little bit of protection uh, by having a spine at the very tip. It's also protecting the eyes uh, a little bit. So on either side of this organism, we have these compound eyes uh, where it's uh, interpreting light uh, and then uh, other stimuli or environmental stimuli. So if we look at this uh, end of the abdomen right here, we have a uropod. This is a fan-like structure that uh, this organism is using to move throughout the water with. So there's a lot of muscle inside this abdomen that it's using to uh, flick uh, water underneath of it. And so uh, as this organism is using that muscle, uh, to flick underneath uh, the abdomen underneath it, it's also uh, moving a large volume of water with this uropod. So it'll flick the water uh, in this direction, um, and then the crayfish will move away in defense. So the very middle segment of this uropod, so if I spread this out a little bit, this very middle, middle segment here, this is the telson right here, and so this is. Uh, uh, modified in most uh, arthropods. So if you remember uh, a horseshoe crab, that spine in the very back of a horseshoe crab is uh, is the telson. So this serves just uh, as an exit for um, the digestive system as well as adding another segment to this uropod here. So if we flip this organism over uh, and we look at the telson, you can see the exit for that digestive system right here. So this here is the anus. Um, all food waste is ejected through this uh, hole right here. So, if we look at the underside of the abdomen, we can start to see uh, these appendages uh, or pseudo legs. So they're not true legs uh, here. So these are called swimmerettes. Um, these are helping this organism to uh, stabilize itself while it's swimming uh, or moving throughout the water. This here is a female. So this organism is slightly uh, sexual, uh, or these crayfish are slightly expressing sexual dimorphism. So if we compare a male and a female uh, crayfish, males will have what are called copulatory swimmerettes right here and here. 
So these two swimmerettes are then used to clasp onto a female uh, during reproduction. A female doesn't have these copulatory swimmerettes, so if you want to determine the sex of a crayfish, you check for these copulatory swimmerettes. So once again, this one's a male, uh, and then this one's a female. So if we're looking uh, past those copulatory swimmerettes, uh, and now we are at the cephalothorax, we have uh, true legs. So we have four pairs uh, for a total of eight of these true walking legs. So these walking legs are used exactly for what they're uh, what it sounds like. They're used for locomotion, uh, as well as uh, in the case of these front two, um, for helping to move food towards the mouth. So if we move uh, these appendages out of the way, um, we can now see a little bit more clearly this structure right here. So this is what we call a chelyped. So this is a modified chelicera. So if you think back to chelicerata, so the scorpions, uh, the ticks, uh, or mites, they all have a chelicera. So this is a highly modified chelicera right here, which we call a chelyped. So it has this claw at the end with a lot of muscle here uh, that's exerting onto a single point right here. So it's using this, uh, these claws uh, to compete with other mates. So males will have fairly large claws uh, as a deterrent for other males that are competing for uh, females. These claws are also being used to tear apart uh, organic matter. So crayfish are one of the largest uh, detritivores um, within a stream. So these guys will be tearing apart decaying organisms like fish or mammals um, that live in a stream or had lived in a stream. So these things are extremely powerful and they're tearing apart any organic matter that this organism is going to be eating. These two appendages right here and here, these are called maxillipeds. So these are carrying food uh, from these front uh, walking legs here. If I can pull one out without another one. So this uh, appendage here, this front walking leg is carrying food from these chelipeds to these maxillipeds. And these maxillipeds are just pushing food uh, through the mandibles. So if we separate these maxillipeds you can see this structure right here. So this is uh, the mandible of this or, or the mandibles of this organism. So if we move these out of the way, they are very very tough structures. You can see the mouth. I don't want to break it too much. So right now you're looking down uh, into the mouth of this organism. So the mouth is ventrally located. So on the bottom. And so food has to travel uh, directly up from this mouth. So the mouth is located right here. Food has to travel up uh, into the stomach and then it travels across uh, into the, um, another chamber of the stomach and then into the intestine. So they have a fairly complex digestive system, uh, which we'll see in a bit. Uh, other aspects of external anatomy that you can see, there are these antennae. Uh, there's a large pair and a small pair called antennules uh, here at the very top of the head. So one of the characteristics of Malacostraca uh, is that they have two pairs of antennae. So once again, you have one pair here and they have a second pair uh, right here. So a small pair and a large pair. Um, I believe I already mentioned the eye. Uh, they have a compound eye on either side of the head. Um, I believe that's about it for external anatomy that I went over in the dissections uh, in class. So if we look at our crayfish, we're going to start making, uh, well, I'm going to start making a couple cuts. So uh, when, we're, when we were making these cuts in class, we just uh, were cutting underneath uh, the carapace on this uh, cephalothorax. So we cut right up into the rostrum, right uh, just behind the eyes. Then we flipped it around and we made uh, our incision look kind of like a T. So we started to cut down uh, on the other side, so leaving the head, and we peeled it away uh, from the body. We did this on both sides, like this. And then we removed that outer carapace, being careful not to tear too much of the internal organs. So if you took your scissors, and you just stab down, uh, you'd be tearing through the heart and uh, uh, the stomach, which are important, uh, and we'll see, well, I'll point out in just a second. 
So one of the structures that you see first here uh, are these gills. So these are uh, these look a lot like uh, feathers. So they have uh, lots of filaments uh, around a main stem. And so those filaments are just increasing surface area so that this organism, this crayfish, can draw as much oxygen from the water um, uh, and then into, or diffuse it into its hemolymph, as well as uh, diffuse as much uh, CO2 outside of its hemolymph or out of its hemolymph into the outside of water. So these gills are attached uh, to each one of these legs. So if I move a gill or if I move a leg, you'll see it moving uh, a gill as well. So you have four pairs of walking legs, and then you have these pairs here, each attached to a uh, leg. So the next step of the dissection was to remove all this so we just take our scissors, run it beneath a membrane here, and we just slowly cut down uh, through those gills, and we just peel it away. And try not to tear as much stuff as I just did. Use my forceps. Tear this material out of the way so we can see uh, everything we want to see. All right, so I moved the heart a little bit, which is frustrating, but I'll leave gills on one side just for now. So uh, the first thing we saw in the dissection was the heart. So this right here is the heart. Uh, this organism has an open circulatory system. So uh, it's pumping hemolymph uh, from this heart straight down the body uh, to uh, each of these legs. So each of these legs is connected to a gill. Uh, and from there, as hemolymph is pumped into these legs, it travels into these gills. It becomes oxygenated, uh, diffuses any CO2 outside uh, into the water column, and then travels throughout the body through a ventral and dorsal blood vessel where it then uh, comes back to this uh, heart. So this, uh, there's this chamber here where this hemolymph is pooling into, and then uh, there's no veins that uh, pump that hemolymph directly into the heart. Instead, we have what are called ostea. So these two ostea, there's one on either side. There's one right here, right where my teasing needle is. So uh, that hemolymph is just passively draining into this heart as this heart is pumping water down the length of the body. So this is, the main structure in that circulatory system. This structure here is all digestive gland. So this digestive gland is attaching to the stomach and it's also attaching to the intestine, which is uh, right behind this digestive gland here. So uh, up here, it's, uh, or this digestive gland is uh, creating uh, digestive enzymes for both the stomach and the uh, intestine. So if we look at the stomach a little bit more, I'll tear away some of this uh, digestive gland to get a better view. This is one of the muscle attachments to uh, the carapace I'll cut away as well. All right, so this here is the stomach. So the stomach extends a little bit into the head region, uh, as well as pretty far back uh, about halfway of the cephalothorax. So this uh, stomach is two-chambered. There's a cardiac chamber and a pyloric chamber. The cardiac chamber is in the front half uh, and it's separated right here. So if we look at the top of this organism, uh, there's a thin line right here. Whoops. Yeah, open it up some. Right here, I don't know if you can see it, it's still somewhat attached to the head tilt it down a little bit. There's that line right there that separates the two chambers. So we have the cardiac in the front, which is still in the head, and then we have the pyloric uh, back here. So if I can just move this a little bit uh, away from that head region, move those muscle attachments. So once we have this uh, loose and pulled out a little bit, you can see this here is the cardiac chamber. Uh, and then right behind this line right here is the pyloric chamber. So those muscle attachments are attaching to this exoskeleton uh, right here at the rostrum. And they're attached to the inside of this cardiac chamber attaching to a series of teeth called the gastric mill. So as food is traveling up through the mouth, it travels through a tube right here. Um, if you can see it in the video, 
This tube is the esophagus, so food is traveling from the mouth uh, directly on the bottom, uh, through that esophagus, then into the cardiac chamber of the stomach, right here, uh, where it's being ground up using that gastric mill. From there, that food will then travel laterally across uh, into the pyloric chamber, where it's being chemically digested. So remember that digestive gland was filling this entire space, uh, and so that's pumping this pyloric chamber uh, full of digestive enzymes. From there, uh, that pyloric chamber, uh, food travels from that pyloric chamber into the intestine, uh, and then it travels the length of the body, uh, and it exits out the anus here. So to show you all the uh, cardiac, uh, or the gastric mill inside the cardiac chamber, I'm going to tear off the stomach. We'll remove this digestive gland here a little bit. I just tore off the intestine on accident. So that intestine is going to be attaching to the base of this pyloric chamber right here, but I tore it off. I'm going to remove the heart. So that right structure right there is the heart. So here's the stomach. I'm going to just snip it off or pull it off easily. And then from there, laying it on its ventral side. So this is the bottom half of this heart. I'm just going to take my teasing needle and these forceps to uh, open up this cardiac region of the stomach. Kind of dragging the teasing needle across. So once we have it open, let me rip this piece here. You should see three sets of teeth. Let me flip this over. All right. So I'm missing one set of teeth, but uh, you should be able to see a pair of teeth here and another pair right here. There should be another one right here, but eh, here it is. It's just flipped over. So right here. So we have three sets of teeth, uh, and these constitute that uh, gastric mill. So these are rubbing against each other, just grinding food up into a paste before it enters the pyloric chamber of that stomach. So this is a really neat adaptation for just grinding food up uh, process of mechanical digestion. So let me move this out of here. Since we have the stomach uh, removed, we can see uh, the, the nervous system. So if I bend this head forward for you guys to see, uh, somewhat see, you can see that there are these two nerve cords right here and right here. Uh, those condense at this region right here, which is the brain. So this is the brain, uh, and these are two nerve cords. These are branching off because you can see the remnants of this esophagus right here. So they branch off uh, to uh, go around the centrally located, um, what's it called, uh, uh, esophagus. So those two reconnect uh, and then run down the length of the body as the ventral nerve cord. So the other thing you can see in this head region uh, are the antenal glands. So this is the excretory system of this organism. We have an antenal gland here, uh, and we have a second one right here. So uh, these are uh, covered with capillary beds that are uh, releasing metabolic waste in the form of ammonia uh, into these antenal glands. And from there, that metabolic waste uh, is traveling through uh, these series of tubules. Any extra water that this organism wants to keep inside of its body or extra nutrients are reabsorbed back through those capillary beds, uh, and then waste is excreted at the very base of this antennae uh, here. Um, so the next step of the dissection was to look at the ventral nerve cord. So remember these two nerve cords right uh, in this head, right here and here, condense into a single nerve cord and then run down the ventral side of this body. So to view that, uh, as well as the intestine, we're going to make a cut in the abdomen right here. Oops, if I can get my scissors under there without stabbing myself. Make that cut. We're going to flip this uh, crayfish on its side or on its back. We'll make the cut here, cut through that small rib, and continue cutting down the ventral side of this crayfish. Alright, 
So now that we have these two cuts and we split this exoskeleton in half, we can now remove this exoskeleton and view uh, the ventral side of this organism. So I'm trying to not tear away any of the important organs. We still have a little bit of exoskeleton left here. So we cut that away or just tear it away, whichever is easier. Not doing this uh, crayfish any, any justice by tearing it apart like this. So uh, this is all muscle. Um, so this is uh, controlling that abdomen. So when this organism gets stressed or startled, it will then uh, flick that abdomen uh, backwards um, using this muscle um, to control and forcefully uh, move a large volume of water past the head, moving this organism backwards. So the ventral nerve, if I can pull it out, is right here. So this structure, this small white line, is branching off to every single segment, muscle segment here, uh, and controlling their movement. If we flip our uh, crayfish back over so it's right side up, we should see uh, the intestine. Oh, dang it. Which I tore out on accident. So. This right here, uh, this tube, is uh, where that uh, intestine would attach to the stomach. So the stomach would be right here, move that digestive gland out of here. The stomach would be right here, um, so food's traveling up through the mouth, into the esophagus, which is still uh, attached right here, into the cardiac chamber, where that material is being ground up using the gastric mill. From there it travels uh, laterally into the pyloric chamber, where it's being chemically digested. From there, it enters the uh, intestine, which is right here. A few more enzymes are added from that digestive gland, and then it runs the length of the body. Um, you can see a remnant of that intestine right here uh, until it exits out the anus at the very end of that abdomen on the underside of that telson. So this is uh, a crayfish dissection in 20 some minutes. Um, they are very complicated organisms. Uh, everything is very condensed. They have a fairly complex digestive system um, because they are eating uh, detritus that they find on the bottom of a stream bed. So I didn't even touch on the reproductive system. There are distinct males and females. So you saw the copulatory swimmerettes of the males uh, and then the females didn't have them. The females will have ovaries, but those are attached directly to the digestive gland. Uh, and same thing with the testes. So you can't uh, see them unless there are fully developed eggs uh, present. So, which we did not have in our uh, individuals. Um, other than that, that makes up or that constitutes a uh, crayfish dissection. Um, if you have any questions, come to one of the review sessions on Friday or I guess tomorrow or Tuesday. Uh, ask your questions or just shoot me an email. Um, be happy to answer any questions you might have.